Queens now a, a, a blog in my in my intellect constipation. <laughs> <laughs> you cracked one out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I tell you, I've just um, uploaded to BitChute and found it a, a dramatization of the, tri um, the trial of Socrates. Mm. It's bloody good. It's only 30 minutes, but blimey. <clears throat> you see, this morning I, 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 I thought I'd get up and write something, see what came out. And, and I had a whole bunch of windows open because I spent yesterday looking at the fiscal reform group stuff, the Robin Smith stuff, okay. um, which is Adrian Wrigley, Robin Smith, uh, and, and a whole bunch of sort of Georges type stuff. And I, I found several really quite interesting things. Um, and I mean, the, the, the path any of us tread it is a well, it is a well, well trodden path, you know. Um, so anyway, that's, so I did my blog today, sort of saying, you know, look, the, the, these are things as they seem to me, and this is what I'm told they should seem like. You know, what is there a disjoint? What is the disjoint? Uh, and so I started wor working through some of those thoughts, and um, I mean, I'm I'm aware of the apology dialogue and, and, and the other dialogues um, in Plato about the trial of Socrates, you know, and he's accused of corrupting, the, inventing new gods and corrupting the youth, basically. Um, anyway, I, I mean, in the context of what's happening at the moment, it, 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 it's, it's very, very apt. And um, yeah, not least as well, that the, the, it was a show trial to get him back for um, seeming to support the tyranny in, in, in Athens against the democracy or whatever. Anyway, here's a funny thing. Um, I was just watching it and they did the vote tally and the vote tally. OK, 501 votes. OK, I, I just literally, as you just called, I was just adding in the percentages. Right. The vote tally was six, 263 people out of 501 found him guilty. There were four spoiled bat ballots. OK, so but that's 52.49 percent. Well, of course, Brexit is 52.48. Um, the, you know, the, the de Gaulle referendum, you know, that led to the Fifth Republic, what in 1968, very similar. I mean, uh, now, you know, people talk often about the tyranny of the majority and um, the criticism of, of, of democracy is that it's that. Um, but of course, they, they don't take it any further than that. And, and, and um, if you find Socratic di di dialogue um, compelling, which, which I do, um, you know, what is, is, I mean, He's not really advocating for one or the other. He's, he's merely comparing them. And and and, and um, uh, I mean, the the main takeaway from Socrates is that the unexamined life is 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 not worth living, or the unexamined democracy or the unexamined tyranny is not worth having, or the say the unexamined oligarchy is not worth having. Do you see what I mean? It's a brilliant film that the unexamined life, um, but, but you know there's a documentary called the unexamined life. It's very good. But um, what was that? Was what was that about? Was that a psychiatrist? No, it, it's um, it, you know I I don't you probably don't know, but I wrote a song called um, uh, Blues Man in, in the Life of the Mind, Jazz Man in the Life of Ideas, and I I played a track um, and used. Uh, Cornell West's uh, one of the quotes that he gives in, in that documentary, but there are other people are in that in it like Zizek, and there are different philosophers from different cultures, and it's really interesting because of course you know there isn't one one point of view or one true answer. I mean, if you boil it down, um, are, are there essential right and wrong? You know, is there an essential right and wrong? You know, uh, and when you go down that route, certainly every time I've gone down it, I've just ended up at the golden rule. You know, I do no harm. 
you know, treat others, treat yourself, that sort of thing. Um, but the dialogues tend to get trapped in rhetoric and sophistry. And, and that's what the trial of Socrates actually shows. I mean, it's half an hour. I mean, it's so worth watching. I mean, other people watching, I'm really not sure what um, what it triggers for other people, which is the point of my blog today, sort of saying, look, you know, because I, 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 I'm sick of being told by other people what other people think and why they're wrong. You know, the only people we know what, you know, is in our hearts is ourselves. And you can tell you, but you know, you, 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 it's, it, you know, you just have to look, look, look inside yourself. That's what you have to do and work on your own uh, game. You know, that, that's, that's the truth of it. Um, and so, I, you know, I've got really, really, really quite, um, you know, just disinterested. I'm, not that I'm disinterested in what other people think, believe, but I'm more interested in what people do to change that circumstance and how constructively they do it or whatever. I, so, I, I, you know, I love hearing about people doing things, but hearing people preaching about what other people should be doing or why they should be doing it differently. It's like the, you know, that the, the um, Harry Enfield character, you don't want to do it like that. You don't want to do it like that. You want to do it like this, you know. Um, and that I, I, you know, for me, that's just the point I've got to in my life. And, you know, I, I wonder how many other people uh, uh, have. But, uh, you know, not that it makes a jot of difference, really. To, to, to um, But that's what the zeitgeist is. That's what the, you know, uh, for all the advocacy from loud voices that are just noise which is heard above the other noise so this is um i mean like in the trial of socrates he sort of says i you know um the oracle at delphi said that i was a wise man i think what she must have meant was that i i was merely wise because i know i don't know anything i know i'm not wise therefore i am wise Whereas I went to see a politician because I thought they might be wise. And, and I realized what the oracle was getting at in that here is a politician that thinks they're wise, but de demonstrably are not wise. They merely claim to have the answers, but they're as clueless as the rest of us. <laughs> and um, I mean, of course, and he sort of says, so I'm kind of guilty of just pointing this out. And, and obviously that upsets people, but it doesn't make me guilty of what I'm accused of. Um, you know, and and I mean, so so just watching that, you know, you think about people like Julian Assange. I'm not saying that he's wise or he's another Socrates or anything like that. But he, you know, he, he what he's guilty of is actually offending the the, the feelings or the self image of people that quite rightly have been excused, uh, not excused, been exposed for crimes. And misdemeanors and and of course um they then use the power that 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 exists within the organs of state and all the rest of it to try and cover that up for themselves you know and and and, and try and make an example of people so so that other people don't feel they can speak out and, and what sent me on this path ranjan was 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 um obviously all of the all of the uh affordable housing stuff and land and all the rest of it. One of the Robin Smith things I looked at yesterday, he basically says the um, forbidden knowledge about mortgages. And what he actually says is that whilst 97 percent of money is created as debt by banks, right, 85 percent of that is actually mortgages and land. And so land values, mortgages make up a massive part of what's going on. And then it occurred to me, um, Obviously, Michael Gove is having a go at the moment with this proposed legislation at buy to let landlords and second homeowners and stuff like that. Now, I I, I, I do think that buy to let and second homes have, have, have damaged the prospects of many people, um, but it's not the whole answer to the whole question. But it seems to me that that's a... Uh, 
an area of people ripe for um, scapegoating at the same time as enriching the people that really caused the problem in the first place, which is the way that the market in mortgages, transfer of land wealth, how that all works through. And, uh, you know, so that's quite interesting. But I, I found this that, that there's a I don't know if you've come across these people. It's called fairer share and it's it, it's called a, the proportional property tax. And it's very interesting. Um, and it's uh, again, it's on the uh, systemic fiscal reform group. They point to it on their front page now. And there's, there's a there's a nice little movie with cartoons and things that they've made. Now, I've not I this. I haven't heard of this. I mean, you know, most people have never heard from Robin Smith and the fiscal reform group doesn't get a look in. Um, but this is quite a Oh, there's a manifesto. I haven't read the manifesto. I have to have a look. Um, but it there was a book written in 2001 by a guy called Cahill called Who Owns Britain. Have you read that one? No, I've, I've come across a book called Who Owns London from the 80s. And I think recently Guy Shrubshaw, who is a green green piece or something like that mm. kind of person, he wrote a book called Who Owns Britain as well, which I don't think is supposed to be an update. But he basically says things like, you know, most of the land is owned by the royal family and things like that. Yeah, well, Cahill wrote the same book in, in the early 2000s. Um, and uh, I... I in my blog today, there, there's a link to a PDF review of that book. I haven't been able to find a copy. It's not on LibGen, for, Gen, for instance. Um, and there is the, the link to Amazon doesn't work. I mean, I, I think I probably will find it and have a read. Uh, but I, I, I would lay odds it's out of print. <laughs> okay, um, I get it. Yeah. But, you know, uh, it's you see, In terms of distractions and, dis uh, uh, you know, and, and trails leading away from the target, okay, um, the housing crisis is a big one because it, it encapsulates a lot of other things, right? And the, the people designing the cure to the perceived ills are in control of the main cause of them. And the main cause is usury, is Sunday, uh, it is usury. Um, and it, it's the creation of money at debt. So, of course, we've talked about Socrates and Plato's apology. Of course, Aristotle on money is the kind of the go to for the moral and ethical basis of. Um, well, there's a thing called cremostatics and cremostatics is the study of wealth, money for money's sake. Um, and that's an Aristotelian thing. You remember we were talking about a lathic truth and stuff like that a couple of days ago or a week ago or whatever. <laughs> may, um, may, I just, I, may, may I just check something in? Um, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, H.L. Mencken, the American mm -hmm. columnist, um, I'm not sure, but his his collection is, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's called a Christomony or a Cremosthony. Uh-huh. And never looked up the etymology of it, just assuming it was something to do with Christ. But actually, no, I have, to have to have another look because yeah, it might it, be what you just said. It might be to do with power and wealth. It's to do with wealth. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got turned on to that by Efimov, the um, basically he's a professor of land economy at St. Petersburg um, University, who wrote extensively at the time of the liberalization of the Russian economy in the early 90s when it was all going to shit for regular Russians. And it's very, very powerful stuff. Um, I mean, the other thing is um, Gerald Kotkin's uh, book about, um, you know, the road to foodalism or whatever, the Kotkin thing. He's a professor of economic geography, well, actually of land economy from a geographic perspective. You know, again, um, but I think there are certain things. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm a valuer and got a degree in, 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 in well, called it state management, it's land economy, they call it at Cambridge. I didn't go to Cambridge, but, you know, it, it's land economy. Um, and so it's a branch of economics. And if you leave with your degree and that's all you know, you don't know anything because you're trained as an apologist. 
If you leave with a degree from Cambridge, then you will automatically get a master's at a year or two later, apparently. Oh, it's the same at Oxford. They're the only two that do that, I think. But okay. you know, the, 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 this is the... Um, it's it, 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 it comes back to asking the right questions rather than... or asking different questions. Whereas academia is about asking the same questions over and over in a slightly different way within the well the, the Foucault again within the espestine which is what what the allowable boundary conditions of, of your uh, 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 of your examination of of, of, of the evidence anyway I, like I say I mean I I, I mean I just made a, a, this blog this morning as a just a collection of, of links and I mean I started off writing it but I, I just I don't know. I, I put the links up. Yeah. Well, no, I did. I did start writing, and and but I, you know, I I said what I wanted to say fairly quickly, <laughs> and then as usual, if uh, th there are plenty of quotes that say it way way better than me, not least quotes from Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, you know, uh, Pelagius, uh, you know, the, the, there are a whole bunch of people, you know, that. that but that, was the main was the main point that pointing things out can land you in trouble or is easily ignored no no well what what um what what the ethics of the position are is 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 um and the psych you know for, for, for the the point of wellness and of and the avoidance of cognitive dissonance and anxiety it, it, it is that you really have to be truthful with yourself you know, so it's, um, and so, so I mean, the, the bit I wrote, I, I mean, I, uh, I, I sort of said it, in the man, in the matter of matter of things as they seem versus things as I've told they are a thought experiment in the court of personal opinion, thinking out loud productions 2022. As pandemics okay. go, I think I had a pretty good one. In the same way as the Great Recession of 2008 to 2012, I would say I had a bad one. The standard is a personal one on having a good one or having a bad one. I always think yeah. back to references to personal histories in the world I grew up in. Did he have a good war? He had a good war. Further back references to he died a good death. Mark Antony in the recent series Rome on HBO. Tell them I died well. On dying well and the unexamined life, I ask myself, how would these charges be answered by me and against which measure? Failing to acknowledge the gods that the city acknowledge and introducing new deities. And then I, then it's just a bunch of quotes from Wikipedia and all the rest. I mean, obviously, I knew what I was because uh, I, I know my Plato, you, you, you know what you're looking for. And because I know so Socrates through Plato and through Aristotle. You, you know, um, but I was just surprised at stringing that together and then finding that that on YouTube that it's only got 10,000 views around Jen and it's absolutely brilliant. It, it's 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 wonderful. I mean, it really is wonderful. I mean, uh, the description says, oh, it's cheesy, it's 70s, it's bad acting or whatever. But, it, you know, it, it's what it's what is said. But that statistic about the, you know, uh, against Socrates, 263, for Socrates, 234, and four abstentions. The eyes to the left or whatever. Do you know, I, I, I mean, there, there's another funny thing. I looked up the etymology of, 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 of um, protagonist because there's, there is a philosopher called uh, uh, Protagoras who, 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 who uh, there's a famous dialogue between him and, and Socrates. Uh, 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 which is again sort of alluded to in the thing, but protagonist antagonist, right? Mm. There's also the, uh, the, uh, protagonist comes from early plays, and in the plays the main character was called the protagonist. Of course, right? yeah. And then the secondary character is called the 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 deutragonist, deutragonist, uh -huh. and then there's also a tritagonist. Who's the third part, right? And 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 the protagonist comes through the central door, the deuteragonist comes from the left door, and the tragic comes from the right door on the stage. 
I mean, I got, I got, I got into seeing Greek plays and all this sort. Of, I, 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 I had a really geeky couple of weeks when I was reading all about it, like breaking the third, breaking the the the, the wall and all that, referring to the audience, all of those things. Um, but it, it, it's it's very interesting to see these societies struggling with all of the same things that the world is struggling with at the moment. I, you know, it, 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 it's absolutely uncanny, but I, I mean, I mean, I've put it on my BitChute channel. It is on YouTube. There are 10,000 views and it's been up. Uh, how long has it been up? Let's have a look. Right, try the Socrates. There we are, eighth of April, two thousand and sixteen. So in eight years, it's had ten thousand views. And it, like I say, it, it, it's it's an amazing thing to watch. Can I tell you something on that subject? It's not a big thing, but um, in a recent bout of book searching, I came across a book by I.F. Stone called The Trial of Socrates. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the title of a book. He that's the subject. Right. Uh, I haven't read it, but that's the subject. And so I.F. Stone, apparently he had a newsletter that he consistently released every week. He was one of the few independent journalists who may have based himself in Washington, D.C. And he just smashed it out weekly. And apparently his mm -hmm. newsletter, it's if you type out I.F. Stone, you find his website mm -hmm. uh, or the one that's been dedicated to him. And all the newsletters are there. So I remember randomly looking at one from the 50s. And he's speaking with such knowledge about what's going on in the Soviet Union, what's going on in Israel, all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, apparently he's, he's a dead ringer for my 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 my, my paternal grandfather. Uh, OK, <laughs> right, well, he's not. Well, I was going to say he looks like him. Yeah. I was going to say he's Jewish and he's from. Uh, well, I mean, all I know is he's from America. But when you read his Wikipedia about how he started the newsletter and stuff like that is you know it's it's inspirational because you can see that he will have done a little bit of work for newspapers and at some point said i mean it's i mean it, it's not the same as matt taibbi starting a whatever Substack, mm -hmm. you know because that because that's huge celebrity already uh going independent you know he was doing this well before that mm -hmm. but i think there were other people that had these newsletters anyway um I think he does the trial of Socrates quite late in his time. Uh, I don't know if he did it after he'd stopped the newsletter. Because uh, I think he did the newsletter sort of consistently for possibly 20 years. Um, and then, uh, you know, and he switched it from being weekly to being bi-weekly or every two weeks or something like that. But, um, I mean, it's a lot of work. And, yeah, so maybe... He was saying well, thanks, something. Thanks for that reference, because I, I I suspect I'll probably be able to get hold of a copy of that on LibGen and have a read. Uh, but it's interesting what he says because um, here we are. Let me just get the reference here. Uh, bum ba dum bum bum. Right, where are we? I'm just coming back from feeding Marvin, my mate's cat. Here we are, look. Um, in the introduction to his play, Socrates on Trial, Andrew Irving claimed that because of his loyalty to Athenian democracy, Socrates willingly accepted the guilty verdict voted by the jurors at his trial. That's so um, funny. So he got he was he was done for undermining democracy. But it's his belief in democracy that allowed him to accept. Uh, well, I, or is I there would, more to, more uh, to, no, more to I, be ready? I think what I think he respected the polity, and the right. polity is not The polity is what any form of governance is supposed to serve. Yeah. Okay. 
and so I think actually to try and understand it in terms of what we think of as democracy now and, and what we think we have in that direction um, I, I think it's probably better to define what the polity is and then figure out right if we're going to govern in the interests of the polity what are we going to do now and this is one of the weaknesses of, of Klaus Schwab's stakeholder capitalism okay it, their definition of the polity is too elite it's an elitist definition of the polity and I uh, um, it is arguable that Socrates um, definition of how best to 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 govern the polity uh, is elitist um, but it's it isn't it's not a necessary condition of elitism that it has to be exclusive of um, the interests of those who are not within the elite category so you know so that's fairness justice and all of those sorts of things now um i i i, I you know i i, I don't know I, I i wouldn't argue one way or the other what what socrates is thought to have thought or what aristotle or plato actually say or what other people have said about what he may or may not have thought he's not here to answer for himself number one um but i think what one can find in the dialogues are very good questions and you know questions equally relevant today but in the context of today but as I say I, I, I think um, the governance of the polity it, 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 it is uh, then open to all the questions about you know because of course you know Plato argued for philosopher kings you know and 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 and, and basically an aristocracy uh, you know Kant he, 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 his his take on things um, I, you know different for philosophy everybody has their own particular opinion as to what they think will work best um, I, you know I, you know I, I don't pretend to know I, I, I really don't um, uh, I, I think I have some idea of what a fair uh, uh, sub aspect of, of, of land economy um, would be. And you know, I, I, I'm very persuaded by the views of Robin Smith and Dr. Edward George um, and, and, and Chester Mellock and distributed and what have you. Um, but that's one aspect of it, how how people organise within that and who they choose to release that on their behalf, whether it's done by a direct democracy. Um, again, I, I, it's, it's such, a, such a huge, broad question. You know, how, how, you know, it, 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 yeah, there are no simple answers and there isn't one answer. Have you ever read any Tacitus? Any? Tacitus. Yes. Yeah. Because um, I remember realising that Tacitus was worth a quick look at at some point. Um, the reason why I was switched on to him was firstly because uh, there's a quote. I can't remember how you say it in Latin, but it's something like corruptissimus res plus leges. Uh, the more corrupt the state, the more laws there are. Right. You know, or, yeah. or more to the point, the more laws there are, the more corrupt the state. Mm. Um, and then uh, there's, I think he came to Britain. So he, there's. He, he, he wrote Britain a biography of Agricola, didn't he? Agricola was his father in law who was the governor of Britain. Okay. I and was, so I think that was Tacitus. Yeah, because I remember the audiobook that I was listening to, I remember quickly going through, you know, his take on Germany, his take on Britain. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, it's him kind of on rhetoric. And that was interesting because he talks about hearing people, possibly young, but very arrogant whenever they walked into the debate and, you know, going to extremes. 
Mm. But he also did a bit where he talks about how if someone had written something that was not uh, looked upon favorably, then they would get a knock on the door um, and they would be, I'm not sure if they were then told to, you know, create a mea culpa or something like that mm. you know, to, 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 to kind of revert to the previous non-position that they would have had just by being silent. Mm-hmm. Um, and that made me think of some of the censorship that we have at the moment, but you know, it not being new. Um, but would you say that, you know, what you were saying about the secret knowledge of uh, mortgages and all that kind of thing. So basically there's things that you can't say. So Plato has said things that you can't say, despite liking the environment that he was in. No, so- Socrates. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so Socrates yeah. said things that you can't say, just, thank you, for, mm-hmm. despite respecting the people around him, you know, the, the idea of the people around him, you know, that, that concept. Uh, but he said things you couldn't say. Assange has. And so you, you're linking that to do with the housing question, aren't you? And money question. Well, and the media. When, we, when we did our um, examining the. Desmond. The uh, going direct paradigm okay. discussion, right? I, I, in the description, or when I put it on my business blog, I, I said uh, this basically lifted and quoted from uh, Dr. Adrian Quigley. Um, you know, people reading this are going to have to unlearn some of the things that they really believe in, you know. But to understand the point of view of the customer in this or the people who are, are excluded, you need to know why it is they think what they think and that means you have to look at stuff that you you know maybe you would call and call them conspiracy theories or whatever and of course that's such a cop out you know when when people say oh that's just a conspiracy theory what it means is they can't be asked to provide the counter arguments yeah because they sort of say oh you know it the your concerns are not important enough for me to actually engage with you in discussion as to why things are the way they are but you know you obviously aren't worth you know because you're peddling conspiracy theories i mean that you know it's basically but the going, the going direct par- but the going direct paradigm was that to do with going straight to the customer no it, no that, 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 that's the name of the blackstone report um to the federal reserve in the summer of 2019 explaining how they needed to deal with the next monetary crisis there's a you and know it's published it's on their blog it's called it's called going direct and i call it okay. the going direct paradigm because the great reset is basically uh the the um the policy implementation of the going direct recommendations you know for changing the water in the fishbowl the water in the fishbowl being money in this instance or the financial system okay yeah the big guys so larry fink of blackrock yeah does that well the the yeah. the, the, the author of it was Hil, Hil, hildebrand or hillebrand right um I, yeah but anyway i mean that that that's what that reference was to yeah okay so the changing of the rules yeah i mean you know and and it's not like oh this isn't working we better change the rules i mean this this has been on the agenda um for a long time you know from way before the 2018 financial crisis uh, but anyway, I, don't, I, I haven't got time to go into all of that. I mean, that, that's, I mean, anyone that wants to find out about it can find out about it. You know, it's my, not my job to, because I'm just not interested, you know, I, 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 I'm interested in building affordable housing and getting on with doing that. And I say the things I do based on an understanding or my understanding of what going direct actually means. I think it's significant, right? Um, and the yeah so uh, 
you know, going over and over and over. I, I mean, that that's why David doesn't blog anymore, because um, he just felt he's repeating himself. And, and you know, you, you do your bit and other people can pick it up and run with it if they want to, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the modern way is to force any old reinvented money for old rope, forcing it down people's throats. That's what monopolists do. Um, but I, like I say, I, I, I've just got zero patience anymore, Ranjan, you know. I, I, um, yeah. Have we got a cross line or is that? Yeah. No, no, it's just, just some kids in the background. Please. Anyway, look, it's really warm here. It's getting very warm in, in, in my thing because the road. So I'm going to have to go because I'm sweating and I'm going to have a shower and get some cooler clothes on. <laughs> OK, well, are you around later? Yeah. If I do anything, I'll chuck it at you. Yeah, sure. I, I, I will be around. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Cool. Brilliant. Cheers, Ranjan. Take care. Bye. Bye.